Good Purim, people. I take my Purim very seriously. This is the most important day of the year, in my opinion. You know what they say about Yom Kippur, like the Yom Kippur, like the most serious, solemn, important day of the Jewish year? Actually, Yom Kippurim, a day like Purim, that's actually what Yom Kippur is about. So, which is really just to say that Purim is such an important holiday. And it's clearly like, I'm, there are some people that are Purim people. So I'm a Purim person. This is my favorite thing ever. So why? Why is it the best thing in the world? Well, first of all, you know, you get to dress up. Dressing up is such a deep thing because we're always dressing up. Every day we're dressing up, right? We are. Putting on a costume every day, putting on a mask every day. But on Purim, we take it the next step and make that conscious. We make it conscious of saying, anyway, I'm putting on a mask. I might as well be conscious of it and work it and use it for like, psychological transformations, nothing like it. Nothing like the psychological transformations that happen on Purim. So how do we do it and what is it? So the, the, basic, the basic foundation stones of this holiday are, look at the name of it. What do we do on Purim? We look at, we read Megillat Esther, the Megillah, the Gansa Megillah, the story of Esther. And the word Megillah is connected to Gilui, which means revelation. The word Esther is connected to Hester, Hester Panim, which means hidden. So Megillat Esther basically means the revelation of the hidden. That is the basic theme of this day. So that's the goal. The goal is to go down deep and figure out what it is that, that I'm hiding and bring it to the surface. And if I can do that, then then, um, then, then wonderful things will occur. So that's the promise of today. So the revelation of the hidden. The next piece is, of course, we never really share those hidden things with people. And so it's so beautiful that Mishloch Manot, uh, the idea of giving gifts, giving food to our friends, you're never supposed to like face your friend and give it to them. You're always supposed to send it through a second person. It's such a funny little little ritual that we do on Purim, we, we give gifts to our friends, but we give it through somebody else, which is just another, another layer of saying, what is it that this day is about? It's about recognizing that very rarely do we actually face the people that we're, that we're communicating with or giving to. Very rarely do we actually like show them who we are. And, and that also is represented by this amazing ritual of giving Mishloach Manot, giving gifts to a friend that you have to send through somebody else. You're not giving it, your friend never sees your face. Okay, this is all to say that we're never really showing each other who we really are. And here's a chance to do that. That's what Purim is, here's a chance to do that. So how do we do it? One of the other tenets of the day is that you're supposed to drink Ad Delo Yada until you no longer have the knowledge of the difference between these two statements. The two statements are Baruch Mordechai and Aror Haman. Blessed is Mordechai and cursed is Haman. This is the other ten of the day. We're supposed to drink or get into a state of, of, of awareness that we're no longer able to tell the difference between blessed is Mordechai, the, the good guy, and cursed is Haman, the bad guy. We're supposed to get into a place where we no longer tell the difference. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we do this? Okay, drinking and dressing up and accessing our deepest, our deepest hidden places. Because the truth of that statement, Adelo Yada, is that when I get in touch with my deepest Haman place, with my bad guy place, with my shadow place, with my dark side place, then Baruch Haman, that that becomes a blessing in my life. That becomes a blessing. That the path to blessing on Purim is in accessing our deeper, dark material and bringing it out to the surface and revealing it. And that creates blessing. I'm a psychotherapist. So basically, this is the work I do every day, which I guess is why I'm a Purim person, because psychotherapy is just this. It's people come to me and they sit there and they take off the masks and they actually say the truth about who they are. It's such a great job. And it's such an important thing to do. Um, I can't tell you, I can't even tell you the tens and tens of examples I have of somebody who in their life, I mean, it's, a, it's all of us, in their life, they're the, the, a great mother and they're a great, you know, friend and they're the great daughter and they're the great husband and, right? But, but under the surface, they hold, we hold all this not so greatness, okay? And so often what, 
Um, you know, many years ago, I had um, a, a mother, a single mother coming to me and all, all day long, she was like the perfect mother. And then at night, after the kids went to sleep, she basically would do drugs, do drugs. Nobody would know it. Nobody would know it. But she was um, a drug addict. Okay. And this hidden part of her, she was so terrified of it. And God forbid she should ever tell anybody about it. But here she was in therapy, like trying to give word to it for the first time ever, letting other people, you know, letting one other individual know about it. And the work that we did was basically to take apart the secret and say, what would it be like to share this with one other person? Okay, you're sharing it with me. Now, is there somebody else you can share this with in your life? And slowly, slowly, she started to bring this, the shadow part of herself, the nighttime part of herself to the surface more. And the more she did this, she accessed joy in her life. She accessed um, self-expression, all of these things that she was locked, you know, when she would hide away the parts of herself, the drug addict part of herself, she was also losing access to her creativity and to her expression and to her joy and fun, all sorts of parts of herself she was also losing access to. So the idea was to bring that, and we used Purim, we used Purim actually as one of the methods for, for her to bring this, this material to the surface. On Purim, she dressed up as a drug addict. Still not telling the world about, about her little secret, but on Purim, she got to play it out. And for that one day, she was that person that she was from 8.30 p.m. till 11.30 every night. She got to play it out. Um, every year when it comes to, to Purim time, I'm always working this hard in, in psychotherapy um, with myself and with my clients of saying, what is it that you're hiding? What is it, what is it that you're, you're secretly not telling people about? And how can you use Purim to bring it out and to access it. So, so one of my clients talks about, she's the sweetest person in the world. She's just the, as sweet as sugar, but she's also a bitch. She has this side to her that's mean and cutting. And usually she just is mean and cutting to herself. And so she tends to get depressed because she just takes it out on herself. So she's this sweet, sweetheart who's also depressed. But she then located this part of herself that is the bitch. And that's what we call the, the bitch. And the more she gave access to the bitch, the more that bitch stopped hurting her and being depressed, okay, and allowed, allowed her to bring those intense bitchy parts of herself out into the world, and her depression went away. And also on Purim, who did she dress up as? She dressed up as the bitch. And then for 24 hours during Purim, she was a bitch, and she let herself be a bitch out in the world. And it was, I'm sorry I keep on saying that word, if it offends you, forgive me. It's part of my Haman side. I curse. Um, she let it out for 24 hours and she experimented with it and she played with it. This is the great laboratory that is Purim, my friends. Please, I don't know what you're doing for Purim. And, and, and outside of is, you know, the old cities of, of Israel, it's, it's starting tonight. In America, it's starting tonight and tomorrow. In Jerusalem, we're going to be doing it also Thursday night and Friday. You can come here too like use this this is such a great opportunity to actually get in touch with these treasure houses of hidden dark energies within us and bring them out and show them the light of day and the beauty is that when we do bring it out they bring blessing so just take a moment right now as you're sitting here listening to me this is this is your opportunity think about what you're hiding what are you hiding what are you keeping secrets about you know for me for sure, it's um, there's this part of me that 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 um, feels like a failure. Okay, like and it's like it gets very hurt by rejection. I could go all I could go on and on about it. You know what happened to me is I I felt it a couple months ago. It hit me really hard, and I just kept on pushing it away and kept on. No, I'm not a failure. Rah, rah, rah. But then it came out in my lower back, and my and my back went out. And the more that I like sat with the pain in my back, I got into those feelings of what is it like to feel like a failure? And, and so part of my, my forum this year is going to be around growing old and, 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 and feeling like a failure. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try and work it. I'm going to try and give access to this part of me that, that I really don't give much space to. That's going to be, that's going to be the goal. Accessing the hidden part. So what is your secret? What is the part of you that you really don't see any, any blessing in? And ask yourself right now, like, what could be the blessing of bringing this out into the light of day? What could be the blessing 
of bringing it out into the light of day. Because at the end of the day, there's also this idea of cursed is Mordechai. Cursed is this part of myself that, that has to be always good and has to be always the hero and has to be always the perfect one. There's a curse that comes with that. There's a curse that comes with having to be perfect all the time. And when for 24 hours, if I can just allow myself to enter that state of consciousness of, you know, me and my in my strong suit and with my my happy, shiny face, like usually that feels like a blessing. But there's also an aspect where it's cursing me. So to ask myself now, what are the parts of me that I'm hiding and I'm keeping a secret? And how are they actually blessed? Baruch Haman. And then what are the parts of me that is my shiny, you know, Mordechai self, my, my, my righteous self? That I'm, that I'm always showing the world and, and, and identifying with that actually brings a curse with it. And to allow the nahafuchu, the overturning of these deep psychological pillars within us for the good. Good Purim, my friends. Have a glorious one. Come by and visit. We're doing a women's Megillah reading Thursday night, and we're doing a kids Megillah reading at 1030 on Friday morning, and we're just going to be partying, and we're just going to be ourselves, and we're going to be um, dark and bright and crazy and real and ridiculous. And please come join in.